Welcome back to the home of the Georgia Silver Hunter. And today we will be hunting a $500 Brinks box of quarters that I picked up recently from my local Fifth Third. I open these at the bank because you want to make sure that you do get circulated quarters because hunting an entire box of the new, where'd it go? The new 2022s is not that much fun. So uh, we're hoping to find some silver today. We'll al we're always on the hunt for West Point minted quarters, and there are a million errors and varieties out there to be had. So we'll be going through this box as I find interesting quarters. I'll bring you in. We'll talk about it. Hopefully you'll learn something, and we'll find some treasure in this box of quarters. So here we go with roll number one. Uh, we did have a 2022 uh, Sally Ride quarter. I know when it first came out, I was excited to find one of those, and I would bring it in and be like, hey, guys, I'm finding the new 2022s, and now I can't stand looking at them. Uh, I did pick up a box of quarters a couple of weeks ago, and about three-quarters of the box, half to three-quarters of the box was loaded with those. Uh, that had a real silvery edge on it, so I was just checking. It is one of the new state quarters. Uh, but basically what we're doing today is we are going through, we are looking at the front and back of each quarter, and we are looking at dates and designs to see, like the 1983, uh, has a, hey, uh, what do they call it, the spitting eagle error. Uh, but we'll be looking at each quarter for the various markers that we're looking for to understand if they're errors or varieties or if they have special numismatic value. The, this is the uh, Tallgrass Prairie. It is a potential West Point quarter, so we always want to look at that mint mark for a W. Uh, sometimes we go through entire rolls and there's not a whole lot to look at. So there's not much to talk about on some of these. Now the new quarters, there is this, it's called the Drooling George. There's a little dye chip on the corner of the mouth. I will put that under the scope and see if we have any of those. And at some point in the video, I'm sure I'll take you under the scope and show you one. And then the crossing the Delaware, there's a huge dye chip. You can see it with the naked eye. Uh, the bigger the dye chip, the more it's worth. So we're hoping to find one of those today. Uh, the last couple of boxes, I have found some really good ones. So fingers crossed, we'll find some more. So lots of 2022s to look at for that die chip. Now this is the war in the Pacific Denver. Unfortunately, no W mint mark on that. The West Point Minute Quarters, there's about 2 million of each of them in circulation, and uh, they run anywhere from about 10 to, I was surprised last week when I found a war in the Pacific. They're going for like $45 to $60 on eBay, so really valuable quarters. Oh, and I missed these two. All right. Well, I'm going to go off camera. I'll check these guys under the scope. If I find anything interesting, I'll bring you in. Other than that, so I just cracked into roll number two. Nothing of real value here, but just showing you that the U.S. Mint is uh, in Brinks. They are not, uh, they do still make mistakes. So you can see right in here, I'll pick up just this little cross section. You can see I have a dime stuffed in the middle of this roll. It's a 2001. It's probably a free coin. Uh, I'll have to count these when I get done with the roll to see if I got every quarter that I should have. But sometimes, even from the, the armored car companies, you get rolls that are heavy and rolls that are light. And uh, sometimes you get stiffed, and that's just part of the game. Just looking at a couple of those shiny ones real quick. All right, back to the hunt. I wish I was kidding, but I just cracked into roll number three. And like we found a dime on the last one, looks like, get out of here, paper. Looks like we may have gotten stuffed with a nickel this time. And oh, by the way, last time that was a dime, that was extra. So I actually made a dime on that one. Uh, this one is a current nickel, and it's all beat up, so nothing special here, but it's a nickel we'll put up here with our dime. And again, I'll count and see if I was stiffed. I have a feeling I was probably stiffed. Well, we're on roll number five, and the trend is continuing. You can see I just got the paper open. So we just got the paper off of roll ten, and this is becoming a thing. Uh, let me see if I can do this one-handed here. Hopefully you guys can see the slivers in here, because we have yet another nickel. I can hold it right. Looks like a 1984 nickel. So that's three nickels on the box so far. And this already fell out. We had a dime stuffed in here, courtesy of, and let me zoom in here a little bit, courtesy of Brinks or the U.S. Mint or whoever stuffed these rolls. But uh, 
Looks like we've now been shorted at least three nickels, because those uh, last nickels were shorted rolls. That one dime was an extra dime, and I'm willing to bet this is also shorted. So that's a lot of quarters being shorted in bank-wrapped rolls. So I'm bringing you in here to that same 10th roll. Uh, it did produce our first sort of error. This is the 2016 Homestead, which has a bazillion DDRs on it, but it has a couple of errors as well. I have one pulled up here on the computer just so you can see it. It's called the snow on the roof error, and they are little die chips along the edge of the roof that look like snow on the roof. I'll bring it over and show you the other side. That's what it's supposed to look like on both sides. But uh, we've got that error in place here, so it looks like we've got a little bit of snow. Same roll, a couple quarters later, we have one of the Arizona quarters under the scope. And we have, let me zoom in here for you, we have the extra cactus variety, or it's really an error, I guess. Um, it's where you get a die chip over the engraver's initials. And it's, this one actually looks like it's got two little extra cactuses down there. But uh, this is another one that we see all the time. So we haven't actually gotten into roll 11 yet. I was actually taking the first couple of rolls out to weigh them just because we've had so many overstuffed or understuffed rolls. I wanted to see what we were going to get. And I just want to show you the typical roll, if you guys don't know, of uh, quarters weighs 200, high 227 grams to kind of high 228 grams. So this is a pretty typical roll of quarters. Uh, roll number 11 weighed super heavy. So this is going to probably have like an extra quarter in it maybe an extra nickel or something like that, or it's loaded with silver. Let's, let's hope it's loaded with silver. We don't know until we get it open. But what I wanted to show you is, as I was going down the row to weigh them, I've got a random dime. I've got a random dime stuck here in the middle of my box, and the roll that was sitting on top of it also weighed 230 grams, so that's probably got a dime stuffed in it. And the next roll, just so you guys can see it, I'm taking the very next roll out, uh, 225.4. So that's missing a quarter and maybe has, I don't know, maybe a dime stuffed inside of here. So this is just a complete disaster of bank-wrapped quarters. Uh, let me know in the comments down below if you guys experience this. I mean, I do get the occasional bank-wrapped roll with a penny in it or an extra quarter or something, but... I mean, I'm literally on like four or five rolls here in the first 15, which is just crazy. As I get these open, if I just have like an extra dime or a nickel, I'm not going to bring you in every time, but I just wanted to show you based on the weights, I think we're going to see a lot of that in the next couple of rolls. So we're getting into roll 17. Uh, I realize there's two left in the box, but uh, it's because I have 17 on the scale and we're going to open this one together. Uh, but look at the weight on this thing. 239.3 grams. That's just loaded with stuff. And what I've started doing to keep track is over here, I've got a line of all the stuff that I'm shorted. So these were coins that were in place of quarters. And these are all things that were overstuffed in rolls, meaning I had 41 coins in a roll. So it'll be interesting to see how the math works out in the end. And the last thing I want to do before I open that uh, roll 17 was in roll 16, it was near the very end of the roll, and I just went ahead and finished it out. Uh, we do have another homestead error that I want to show you guys. We haven't found one in the last couple of boxes, so I thought I would call it out here. But it is the leaky bucket. So you can see here just underneath the bucket, let me get my mouse down here. This should be a straight line across the bottom, and we've got an extra die chip down here. Uh, the coin's not in the best of shape, but this is technically a leaky bucket. The really valuable ones, the chip's much bigger and even comes down here underneath the pump. So it looks like the water has leaked out of the out of the bucket all the way down here onto the ground. But this is one of the early uh, early versions of it. So I think as the dyes got worse, that chip got bigger and bigger and bigger. But uh, anyway, there it is. I'm going to get the camera set up and we're going to open this 239.3 gram roll together. Okay, well, there it is. 239.3. I'm guessing at least an extra quarter, probably an extra dime. Uh, maybe we'll get lucky and find some foreigns or silver in here, but... Just based on the way these rolls have been, and that is a terrible open. Uh, I got a feeling we're just looking at a bunch of extra quarters and such. So, quick glance. I don't see any silver. All right, well, that is 20 quarters, and I was left with two extras. Unfortunately, nothing special, but I'm going to go ahead and put those up here on the board because they were extras. 
I'll go through this roll and bring you in if we find anything special. Although I do see here right on top, I do see a Denver Bicentennial that is not the DDO. So we'll put that up here with our other Denver that we've already found. And we'll go from there. So I just got into roll 21 and it did weigh light. Um, and now I feel like I'm just complaining. Uh, I'll make short work of it. But this one, I got the paper open and now I have three nickels. This is obscene. My bad, I just got the paper all the way off and it was four nickels. Roll 23, I really do. I, I wish I was bringing you guys in to show you cool stuff like silver. Instead, I'm bringing you in to show you that we have a 219 gram roll of quarters from Brinks. So finally, a little bit of good news. We're in roll 36 and we have a find that is finally just not a roll that's stuffed with nickels and, and dimes. Uh, we have a San Francisco clad proof. We haven't looked at the uh, reverse yet. Let's check it out together. It's the Block Island, Rhode Island 2018. I want to say I have a bunch of these lately. This one is just making its way through Atlanta. And for a coin that I think only has like seven or 800,000 minted, I've gotten a lot of these lately. But it's a find and it's not lots of nickels and dimes. So back to the hunt. So we're on roll 38 and I finally have something that even I'm excited about and maybe a little perplexed because it's a coin that I've been looking at for a really, really long time. You can see I'm kind of three quarters of the way through the roll. And I have a coin under the scope. Uh, what I have up here is what I believe to be the 1983 P Spitting Eagle. And I don't have one of those. And if you look at this, it's not post-mint damage. It does look like it's some sort of strike through or something like that. Um, I have up above on my other screen, and I'll show you in just a second. Most of the Spitting Eagles, that line actually connects with the Eagle's beak. And I realize mine is a little bit further away than that. Um, but this is the closest thing I've ever found to that type of coin um, or to that description. And the detail on it's pretty good, honestly. Um, just kind of showing you around the quarter here and I'll turn it over just to show you that it is an 83 and it is a Philly. Um, so what I have up here is the Spitting Eagle on PCGS. And if I go over the Eagle's beak, you'll see that, oops, you can see it up here now. I clicked on that by accident. It's a real similar line to the one I have. However, it does appear that, you know, this one does connect with the beak. And let me get mine flipped back over here. Mine doesn't quite get there. But I'm curious, if you guys know much about this Spitting Eagle, does this qualify? Is this just a random strike through? Help me out here, coin community. What do I have here? Because this is a spitting eagle. I'm not sure, you know, what the value is, but it's something I've looked for for a very, very long time. I'm going to put it on the board. I'm going to hang on to it until I figure out exactly what it is. We're on roll 44, really almost all the way through it, and I've got another homestead under the scope, and uh, this one is... One of the many, many DDRs that exist out there. You can see the little outline of the window here, right here, where I've, right here where I've got my mouse. I'll put a little image up on Variety Vista of which one this is, either now or in the wrap up. But uh, this might be worth a buck or two on eBay. It's kind of a coin in bad shape. I may end up actually tossing it back, but I did want to show you that it did come out of this box. So we are all done, and this was probably one of the craziest bankrupt quarter boxes I have ever done. I'll try not to harp on it too much, but the amount of, of uh, shortage and overage roll to roll was absolutely crazy, and I'll do a recap on that in just a second. Um, going through our finds very quickly, I do have this 1983 that I showed you guys under the scope. I really do believe it's got the right markings for being the spitting eagle, but the just the line doesn't match up with the beak. So if you guys know better than I do, please let me know in the comments down below. I'll keep this aside in case it needs to be flipped up and just store it away. Who knows? It could be nothing. We did have that one San Francisco clad uh, business strike for Block Island, and we've got a bunch of those. I did just pull one each of the uh, Drooling George of all of the new quarters. And this was actually my first. You can see just how big that die chip is here 
on the uh, man killer coin. Uh, it's a huge die chip down on the chin. Uh, it's the first one of these that I've found. But I did find one in each of the three designs. We did have two. I didn't bring you in for both of them. I really just showed you the one, but I had two of the extra cactus errors on the Arizona. I did show you guys, I believe, all three of these homestead quarters. We had one that was the DDR, or yeah, it was a DDR. We had one leaky bucket, and we had one snow on the roof. Uh, if you're new to coin roll hunting, really that sixth claw Alaska quarter, which I don't look for anymore because I found so many, uh, and this homestead quarter are by far the easiest sort of DDRs and errors to find, probably followed by this Arizona. If you watch all my quarter hunts, you see I find these kinds of things all the time. We did end up with, I believe, seven Philly Bicentennials. We had four Denver Bicentennials. None of the Denvers had the DDR or DDO, but one of these days I'm going to find it. And what you see here is I've got a left and a right column. Uh, the left column is full of everything that was understuffed in a roll. So, you know, I had a nickel instead of a quarter or a dime instead of a quarter. I threw these pennies in here as placeholders. Those were rolls where there was one whole quarter missing. So the, the roll was just literally light by a whole quarter. And on the right here is I kept track of everything where there was just extra stuff in a roll, whether it be a whole quarter, a dime, so on and so forth. And uh, I went ahead and did all the math for you so you don't have to add this thing up. But we had 25 misstuffed coins, which came out to a grand total of... Uh, $2.15 worth of change right here. And remember, these pennies are actually quarters. Um, so I believe it was $2.15, but there were 25 coins that were understuffed, which would be $6.25, which means I was shorted $4.10 here. My overage, we had uh, 12 coins in total for a value of $1.85. And at the end of the day, I was shorted by $2.25 and bank wrapped rolls and it's just crazy you, you shouldn't this is just the worst quality control in the entire world i'm really really disappointed it makes me not even really want to look at quarter boxes for a little while that's kind of how disgusted i am at how badly stuffed these were if they were customer rolls fine but bank wrapped it's it's uncalled for with that said i did close out one whole quarter book i could have closed them both out but i accidentally threw one of the coins back because i wasn't paying attention and i'm not going back through my discards to find it but i have one entire book from 1999 to 2004 completed and this was uh, i got both of these books from a coin collection that i bought i don't know a year or two ago and they'd already been started and i've just kind of forgotten about them and in the last couple of boxes, I've tried to finish them out. This one's only missing one quarter, so this one I should be able to finish out any day now. So with that said, I'm really sorry if I came across as whiny throughout this video. I know I probably did. Um, I didn't mean to, but at the end of the day, I'm just super frustrated. And if you're new to coin roll hunting, or even if you've done it for a long time, I'm sure you would be frustrated as well if you went and bought $10 worth of coins and only got $8 worth. And that's kind of what happened here. Not quite a, a, a that percentage-wise, but uh, just really disappointed. I think the finds were pretty typical. Uh, you know, being able to find a couple of DDRs, a couple of errors. You know, the drooling Georges are everywhere. You know, finding a business strike is always nice. And I'm just really excited to hear from you guys if you think this 1983 Philly is a spitting eagle. That's something I'd love to flip up and just throw into the, uh, throw into the collection. So with that said, if you like this video, and honestly, if you didn't like it, I, I totally get it. But uh, drop down in the comments. Let me know. I'd love to hear from you guys. How would you feel about this box? If you're new to the channel, I do coin roll hunts all the time. And usually they're much more positive than this one. Uh, so if you're interested in seeing any of my other content, please do click on that subscribe button and click on that little bell and select all so you get notified each and every time I release a new video. With that said, you guys take care and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.